Do you ever feel like that flame inside of you is going out? Do you ever feel like, do you ever feel overwhelmed, stressed, maxed out? Feel like you just can't do anything else? Feel like you just want to go just lay on the couch and just veg out? Today we're going to talk about burnout. Anybody uh, ever feel like that? You mean yet this week? Yeah, like this morning, <laughs> right. yesterday, the day before. Too frequently. You ever feel burnt out? Yes. I know somebody, the coach, yeah. was feeling a little burnt out last week. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Man, avoiding burnout. So, define, define burnout for me. Well, it's mental and physical. It's not just mental. And I think a lot of times we attribute burnout or just a lot of stress. We're like, oh, I'm really, really stressed. I'm burned out. But burned out is actually kind of taking stress a step further. Um, and it can be mentally and physically um, evident. And I think that also, you know, the, the textbook definition says it takes joy out of your career, your friendships, and your family interactions. Um, and I think that, too, there's – you see where people are just stressed, constantly stressed. And we all know that person who just has never-ending stress. And so I'm like, at what point does that lead to burnout? And that's an individual kind of thing. But the reason why I wanted to talk about this today is because – I think if you can be aware of what leads to burnout and what causes burnout, that maybe you can kind of catch yourself and stop it before it actually happens. Um, You know, and and like I said, what's the difference between stress and burnout? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not an expert on it, but I did read a lot about it because I was kind of curious because sometimes I really do feel like I just can't do anything else. I'm like, I just come to a stopping point physically and mentally it's a workout isn't going to help taking a day off doesn't really help and that's where I'm like oh this is kind of what leads into burnout Jed what do you think that she just mentioned two words stress and burnout what, what, do, you, what, what do you how do, how do you think those two things relate to each other yeah I, hand in hand <laughs> um and I don't know how to I really don't know how to put it into words how closely related they are because they sleep together. Yeah. That, yeah. There's, there's no question. Um, I'd say there's no way to eliminate stress from our lives. No, there's not. But how do we manage the stress load that is that we are allowing to come into our lives? Mm hmm that then leads to burnout. I I think for those of us that have been, that have had that condition, we'll call it a condition of burnout before. It's, it's hard to bring yourself back from that. Yes. Sometimes. And, and I mean, I think taking it a step further, it does lead to serious depression. Yeah. Like it's, it's not like depression is a consequence I'm not saying you can't just be depressed without suffering from burnout, but a lot of times type A, very driven people experience burnout. And I thought for our audience, a lot of people who are athletes, that's why I was like, we need to talk about this. I I am the furthest from type A that there could be about most things. But I think deadline driven people experience burnout too, because I will tell you firsthand that the step before burnout is the craziest amount of productivity that I'm capable of. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use an example from my former job, a 40 page football preview that I was responsible for 90% of the content for due at a certain time, but you couldn't start until a certain time because Practice didn't start until that time. So you can't get any pictures. You can't get any action shots. You can't get any reactions from the players because they're not available. Now, this is 15 years ago. It's better now with texting and Twitter and all that stuff. But back then, it was August 1st to August 15th-ish. But so I would say, you know, you say you're not type A. I don't think I am. Okay, I'll take that. 
but you're a very driven individual. That's true. You also thrive on deadlines because that's how you've lived your life. I mean, it's what you did. And I think that for me too, deadlines definitely kind of bring out a higher level of stress and then it can cross over into that burnout very quickly where you lose your creativity. And so say you had like a deadline like that. And then two days later, you were expected to deliver something else that was creative and wonderful. Yeah, that was the case. How was that work going to suffer? Uh, uh, immeasurably. And and would do you think other people would notice it? Or do you think it was just something that you were being critical of yourself? I think a little of both. Yeah. I think a little of both. Um, I will say that you can look back at those weekly newspapers during those two weeks for the period of time I did that, and the two resultant newspapers were not exactly award winners. <laughs> okay. so It was pretty much whatever fits. What, what, what about you, Kevin? Oh, oh, I deal with it. I mean, it, it, it hits me. Burnout hits me two or three times a year. And, and, and it's like if you picture – the old, you know, the crash test that you see of mm-hmm. the cars doing, you know, they're doing the thing where it's here's 30 miles an hour hitting the wall. Here's 50. And then they come to the one that's 100 and you go and the car just explodes. That's what happens to me. I, I can tell you where that happens, even if you haven't told me because your schedule mm-hmm. and what training you do, it's non-existent on those weeks. I yeah. can probably go through and tell you exactly when. It's happened to you, whether you told me anything or not. Oh yeah, I mean it's it, and it's like that with it's like that with anything. It, it is it is my my basic functions continue. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the it's like almost like triage where you know I've got an airway and you know the blood the bleeding has stopped, but it's like people and 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 the people that I work with will know, will know it too. It's like okay, he just he, he's not interacting with us. He's not and and it's a two or three day period to where it's almost like just recovery from, okay, you've, you have tried so hard to add all these things that you're trying to do and you're trying to, you know, trying to do things for everybody, all these different things. I mean, I am better at it. I'm better at it. I am much better at it than I was even a couple of years ago. You know, I talked about it before. I mean, one of the, one of the things I love serving our community Mm-hmm. And very, very active in the community. You know, I'd probably argue that in the community that we live in, it's going to be hard to find anybody who's more engaged in more stuff than I am, especially with the schools. And I got to a point, I've been on the school board now for about 15 years. Last time, you have to run every four years. And last time I was, I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm, I got to that point where I'm like, I'm, I'm tired of being everything for everybody. And, um, and then it hurts everything, it hurts your family, hurt, it hurts everything. It hurts your health. It hurts, hurts everything. So I, I do. That's why I, when you came up with this topic, I'm like, I, I'm really, I'm going to learn a lot from this, from this session, we'll call it. But, but I, de- I deal with it at least twice a year. But it's, right. it's when you feel like you have nothing left to give, Yeah. but everybody still needs you. Like nobody knows necessarily that you're feeling burned out, but you definitely feel like people need something from you still, and you still need to deliver. Go ahead. There's also a case of my undiagnosed ADD. I'm 50 years old. I didn't diagnose that back (laughs) when, when I was growing up. Um, Some of the undiagnosed things that I feel like I've got going on, there's, I, I can get burnout when there's a huge task at hand thinking about all I've got to do. Mm-hmm. I can get burned out on that. I, I can get burned out before I start. Well, because I think it's sometimes overwhelming. Yeah. And you know what it's going to, like, I mean, at our age, so we're all early 50s or 50 mm-hmm. almost. Kevin's not 50 yet. I'm 50. Oh, I'm I look sorry. 29. I'm not, I'm not yet. And oh. I, look, I look 69. So. Jed's not 50. <laughs> I look okay. 29, have the mental acuity of an 18-year-old. All right. Um, I'll just stop it there. Yeah. But it, so when we're at this point in life, like we know what it's going to take to accomplish something. And when it is an overwhelming amount of stuff that has to happen or a lot of logistical things, 
it becomes like so much that you can't stop thinking about it or you can't sleep. And hence it leads right. to that state of stagnancy, like where mm -hmm. you just, you don't, instead of doing something like taking action, like you should, you do nothing right. because it's so overwhelming. And that is kind of one of the beginning stages of burnout. And, and like when you're thinking about burnout, you know, the things that come up and Kevin already mentioned a couple, I mean, the exhaustion physically and emotionally depleted isolation. Mm -hmm. You had said, Oh, I just want to be by myself. I just want to mm -hmm. get through things. And it's true. You just, you just want to like be alone so you can just be alone with your thoughts, which sometimes I think is really good. And sometimes is really bad. Mm -hmm. Um, the other one that I like is the escape fantasy and you know, you just get tired of all these demands on you. And like mine is, I'm like, I just want to go in the woods and live in the woods, like in a little cabin, like where you have to like find your own food and, you know, everything is super rustic where you're just taking care of your basic needs. To me, that always sounds like really relaxing because I don't have to worry about everybody else. Yeah. Well, and this is going to sound ridiculous, but I travel a lot and I will stop at like, you know, every every place you find has a has a million Mexican restaurants in it. And this is gonna sound crazy, but but I will literally stop sometimes and just be like, you know, I'm gonna stop and and I'm gonna have an hour lunch by myself and just sit here and what I mean, just listen to some, like put my put my headphones in, listen to some kind of not this is how you know when it happens to me because I'm always listening to things, always reading, always like information stuff of I'm, I want to want to grow, want to learn more, want to. But it'll be like something stupid, like a true crime podcast or something, something that's just completely you're escaping, you're just escaping. escaping. And I'll sit there and literally sit in a sit in a Mexican restaurant by myself in some little town that I'm just traveling to one of the stores and you just kind of just dis completely disconnect from the reality of the, and then, and it's like when you, then you have to kind of, at the end is like getting yourself, okay, time to go get back in the truck, go get back after it. And, but it's a, it, it is, it's a, it's a, these things that you're saying are all things that, that I, the irritability that comes with it. Hold on, go back to the escape yeah. because I don't want to overlook the use of alcohol or drugs to escape. And or those food. Or food, or at, food. The, at the Mexican restaurant. I, yeah. Is it always a Mexican restaurant? It usually. So that's what kind of centers you in your mind. Yeah. It, I mean okay. it's it's my, my, chee my it, cheeseburgers. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean it's it's the chips and salsa. Okay. That that is I mean, because think about how think about how mind numbing that is of hey, I wanna what's your speedy Gonzalez? Yeah. But I want some chips and salsa. Bring me a little. Bring me some spicy cheese dip, and I'm just gonna sit here and just chill out for a little bit. Nobody talking to me. No, not it. That's those times whenever he's not answering the phone, and, and they'll start doing that. They'll start talking to each other, like the store the store managers. And Ironically, things. the phone yeah. just rang. Yeah, the phone phone just <laughs> rang. But that they will start talking to each other, like, "Hey, have you heard from Kevin? I've called him. He's not in." And they slowly like, "Up, oh, it's one of them days. He's not." He's not answering his phone. The reason I'm so curious about this is it always a Mexican restaurant and things like that is because I'm because I'm not I'm because I'm not in in the stores every day because I have a lot of different things that I do. Lunch is usually at my house or in my car most of the time. Mm -hmm. If I stop and eat lunch by myself, I'm having a bad day. Most interesting of the time. because yeah. you're you're doing something that's yeah. not the norm. Yeah, if I stop and go in and sit down and eat lunch by myself. Mm -hmm. I'm having a I'm having a tough day. But most of the time. it's like so right now, just even thinking about it, we're all kind of identifying what we do or where we go mentally when we're having one of those days where we just are having a hard time coping. And I think that everybody has these. And a lot of times we don't share this with anybody. I, I would say that the burnout, it's not like you're going around, I'm burned out, I'm right. burned out. You're not announcing it to everybody at work. You're not necessarily announcing it to your family. Now, are they going to recognize that you're irritable? Uh, definitely. Thankfully, the things that we're doing to cope aren't really dangerous for our health. But, you know, alcohol, 
it can be a really bad one mm-hmm. if you're feeling burned out because it will numb you. Drugs, not really part of our area, but, you know, people take over the counter stuff too. And, and you just have to really be aware that don't comfort yourself with something you've got in your in your drawer or don't start drink if you, if you're not a drinker don't go start having a drink to numb this yeah. because that's where you get into trouble um and that's where this could be prolonged yeah, and i i think it is everybody it happens to everybody differently i think the people that are in that real hardcore type a personality and you've dealt with this and because everybody yes. there's a lot of people say well i'm type a and they're really not they're kind of fringing on that but the people that are really really driven by results by performing by doing things for others by being the person that be count all those things i do i think it's a good equation to to equate it to that that car with the when they're crash testing a car because i think with them and i don't know if you're like this but when it happens to me, it's not a slow progression into this. It is you're flying, you're flying high. I mean, just air, you're going a hundred miles an hour, every making everything happen, and then bam, the wall. And when I, it I when it like happens, there are more signs mm-hmm. for me. Like it's coming. I know when it's coming, and I know I'm on the edge. Mm-hmm. So. I'm like a little bit more aware at this point. I think the irritability too, you know, like everything that somebody says is going to make me irritable. Um, it's usually, and, and I'll be really short or shorter with people when usually I tend to have more patience. Um, and that's usually kind of like a clue to me that, uh oh, so I, I need to step back. So here. how do we know these things are coming? Well, first of all, now that we've mentioned some of the things mm-hmm. that are, you know, to give you a clue, you pay attention. Pay attention to how you feel. And and I think we've been really conditioned, especially people who are type A or driven, is just keep working, keep working hard. You'll just get through it. And And the fact of the matter is you will not. If you keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing, you're going to get to that point where, things don't go well for you like where you have a mental breakdown where you feel crazy depressed the longer you ignore the symptoms the longer it's going to take to recover if you start to identify that oh I'm having these issues maybe I need to take a couple things off my plate maybe I need to step back and have a weekend where I don't have things scheduled. And while a weekend can't necessarily undo burnout or stress, kind of changing things up for a couple of weeks, taking things off your plate as you can. And I know you're probably thinking, I can't take, I can't just stop the school board. I can't just stop the things I'm doing. Usually there are some things and I call it self-preservation. Really, that's what it's about. When you get to this point, you've got to really step back and look at your life. What can I do without right now? Like, what can I stop doing so that I save myself? Yeah, because you can't be of service to everybody else if you can't function. But that's so difficult to do. I've, I've spent several minutes telling you that I'm not type A unless that A is anxiety. Um, and I, I saw, I, I know I talk about memes all the time, but I saw one the other day and it stopped me in my tracks. And I sent it to a girl that works with us here because she and I are basically the same person. It said, I would like to stop worrying about everything all the time. But I also worry that nobody else can worry as well as I can worry about all of the things that need worrying about. Wow. That's my whole life. Yeah. All it's worrying. Life. Yeah. That's that's in a hard that's a hard place to be. It is, yeah. and talk about uh, leading into burnout right. really easily <laughs> I, when I you're know. worried about everything. I know. Um, but so for you, like you've just now like identified mm-hmm. all of those areas and things that are happening with you, and so it's like you've got to start to recognize that and to pull back when you need space. Even though it's hard it, to recognize, it's, it's, it's hard to do. Difficult, yeah. But um, we're all about doing hard things. Correct. <laughs> well, and I think it all 
All joking aside. I think it all goes back to we all, I think anxiety and worry manifest itself differently with everyone where Jed would probably say, well, I'm I'm around Kevin all the time. He doesn't worry about anything. Oh, I think you internalize it. Oh, well, I do worry. Yeah. I worry how I worry, how you say that you worry that nobody else nobody can, else can, can worry, worry like properly. you do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I worry and and this becomes this becomes something that you have to that becomes a a pride and ego thing of I worry that nobody can do the things that I do as good as I can do them. That that's it. Yeah. That's it. I'm I've I've never been a show somebody how to do it guy. I'll get halfway through showing you how to do it, then I'm just going to do it. Yeah, and, and it, then it becomes, well, I am the person to fix this problem. Right. I am the person to do this. I am this. I. And next thing you know, you're you're trying to be all these things, and and the reality is, there's a whole lot of other people out there that can do these things just as good as you yep. can do them. So one of the things that I found when I was looking up information about burnout. Personality characteristics like needing to be in control, perfectionism, and being a type A can increase your risk of burnout. What did you just say, Kevin? <laughs> um, anyway, so 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 beware. Um, you know the the pushing yourself to work harder. We we all like I want to go more. I want to do more. Do more. Work harder. Be better. <clears throat> that doesn't often work out well does it well you start you start getting in a problem and you start you start feeling this way well who's the person to fix that well i'm the person i'm just going to work harder i'm going to do more and and eventually i'm gonna get to the other side of this and not be as much but there's all that's the thing there's always more and the thing is people are going to continue especially it's it's like this it's like this double-edged sword because you always come through Mm -hmm. you always come through and people know that and so they're going to continue i'm going to keep feeding the monster keep feeding 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 more 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 and the only person that can stop it is yourself and that goes hand in hand with the next one i'm not jumping ahead but neglecting your own needs Mm. i was going there to your point I would rather do something and you think, hey, that guy always comes through than to do what I need to do. Yeah. Oh, I would, me too. I would, rather, I would rather do something to make you happy than be happy myself. Yeah. But, and what did I say? Neglecting your own needs. It talks about sacrificing yeah. self-care like sleep, <laughs> yeah. exercise, and eating well. <clears throat> what do they tell you in the airplane? <clears throat> put the mask, a kid. put your yeah. mask on the child first yeah. and then yourself. I, I wouldn't do well with that. I, and, I mean, that's what I, that's what I would do. I, yeah. I, would, I would never put my mask on. Right. Yeah. But sometimes I think we, and this is where I'm like, you have got to take care of yourself. Like you've got to all of a sudden just step into your own life and say, stop this. I've got to have some self-care. And I mean, like I said with Kevin, I don't know. He hasn't told me when things aren't good. But when his schedule, when I see that he did not work out at all, I'm like, "Uh uh-oh, we have a problem. And I can text Kevin, and Kevin will not respond, which is what he just admitted to. But those are the times when I know, oh, boy, we have a problem. And, And it almost always is, like, it's that time when he's going through that phase where it's like, oh my gosh, everything is just overwhelming. I can't, I can't even do my training. And, you know, you're lucky if you can sleep during that time because a lot of times you can't because you've got other stuff going on. Um, you eat Mexican or cheeseburgers. Um, <laughs> you know, you eat bad stuff. And that that is right here on the list of things that you do. Mm-hmm. Um, the displacement of conflict is the next one on this list. And I thought that was really interesting um, because you like to blame everybody else. I'm, I'm going to blame all those people who are asking me for things. I mean, because they have no idea I'm going through burnout. They're going to keep asking. Yeah. You know, it keeps coming. It just keeps coming. Um, but then the next one is you have no time for anything non-work related. I am so guilty of this. I will only work. I will only meet with people that I am coaching. I will only spend time working on schedules. I will stay at my desk all day long and ignore my family and only work. 
Either of you do that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because it's easy to shut everything out and just focus on that work. And that's probably the last thing you need to be doing. Gosh, I feel like I'm sitting in a, <laughs> a counseling session. Yeah, counseling session. <laughs> yeah, probably and I probably need it too. <laughs> well, but but the thing is, if we need this, doesn't everybody need this? Like, doesn't everybody need to hear this? Like, it's we're taught work harder. And especially as type A people, especially athletes, work harder, do more. What is always on your schedule almost every week, Kevin, that you don't like to do? It's on the schedule. Uh-huh. Not well, swimming, not just swimming. <laughs> I was about to say swimming. I was about to say swimming too for you. Uh, you know, okay. I'm trying to. I'm trying to see where you're going here. I don't think what's on my schedule that I don't like. I'll give to. you a hint. It it usually has a little sofa as an icon. Oh, it's your day off. Day off. Yeah. Kevin doesn't like his day off, and a lot of people don't like their day off. But I always put a day off on the schedule because a day off is for you to either get a little bit more sleep. Or recover and replenish. Kevin likes to use it as a makeup day. If I wanted him to have a makeup day, I'd write, have a makeup day. Hey, let me ask you this. <laughs> let me ask you this. Yes. If we want to dive a little bit deeper. Sure. Do you think the reason sometimes we don't like days off, we don't like to slow down, we don't like to not be, and I think, like, we've talked about social media before. I think that is one way that people just zone out and just, just completely escape from the world yes do you think the reason we don't like to do that is because we might be afraid of what's what am i I gonna that's right way to say what happens if you don't do it well not what happens if you don't do it but do i like what i see in myself when i am just quiet and alone and i'm not and I am not producing something. No, because it's forced reflection. And we're taught Jeff's that, shaking his head. Yeah. that doing nothing is not good. I have opinions. Okay, let's hear your opinions. <laughs> the reason I don't, have, I don't have time or make time for non-work things when I am feeling like everything's going a little bit sideways is because I'm good at that. I'm, mm-hmm. doing, what I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I'm good at. Right. And if I can do more of what I'm good at, then I don't have to think about this stuff that's going crazy over here mm-hmm. for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Take that for what it's worth. I mean, there's, there is a lot to unpack right here. Mm -hmm. Um, And the more you think about it and take an honest look at where you are in your life, how you live your life, the things you do, the things you focus on, um, it's easy to see how people fall into becoming burned out. And I think the biggest thing my takeaway is how unhealthy it can be like physically for you. Um, you know, heart disease, diabetes, like there, there are all sorts of other implications aside from just feeling terrible. And also the fact that it can lead to serious depression. Um, I I think that everybody has this idea that people who are successful are always happy. Like, you're happy, right? Because you're successful. But I think depression is kind of one of those things that can, like, pop up in anybody's life at any time. And it's as much a surprise to them as it is to you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, you're like, oh, my gosh, what just happened? Like, what's going on with me? Because we we don't like to really talk about it because, I mean, I'm a positive person. I'm not going to be depressed, right? Well, that's what everybody assumes. Right. But... That's why when we are burned out and noticing that you're burned out, it's important to know these things and to really kind of be able to help yourself because other people aren't going to necessarily be able to step in and be like, hey, are you, are you depressed? Like, what's wrong with you? Only you can be true with yourself and reach out to get help if you need help. Um, but I feel like with burnout, you're not really encouraged to seek help for burnout. I mean, when was the last time I said, "Hey, Kevin, did you get help for your burnout?" Well, yeah, because then that then the next question is, "Well, tell me what's going wrong." Right. Everything. It's like, <laughs> well, we're thinking, "Well, man, I'm I feel like my head's about to explode." Mm-hmm. But then you look around and the things that you that you're touching seem to be working. 
Right. And so then people look at you and it's like, well, it's almost like, well, they've got no problems. Right. Everything's going right. And you're over here juggling all these things in your head, trying to, you feel like, sometimes you feel like the weight of the world is on you. You're trying to do everything. And then it just, it just stops. And like you said, the, the, the physical, emotional spirit, all these, these things suffer. So, so how, how do we, we, we've obviously, we, obviously we've established that a whole lot of people, I would argue probably almost everyone has dealt with this or is dealing with this at some point in time every year. How, how do we, how do we prevent this? What what are some things we can do to prevent burning out, to identify it, maybe to help other people, mm-hmm. our family, friends, others that we see kind of on this pathway. And as you're listening to this, you're probably, like I said, when I was first reading some of the stuff that you sent me, I'm like, whoa, I'm like, man, this is, this, <laughs> this is, is like, real. This is like really where, where I find my, it, the thing that struck me was, Kevin, you're always, if, if burnout is a hundred percent, you live in 90 to 90% to a hundred. That's where you live your entire life right there. That's the chronic stress phase, mm. which then leads into the burnout phase, mm. which then ends up in the habitual burnout phase. Mm. So there are phases of burnout and that's a little scary. That's very scary. Because... You know, habitual burnout. Oh, my gosh. Nobody wants to live there. But I think some of us are on the edge. Yeah, this is is an eye-opening list when you realize you're a strong 3.75 most of the time. Exactly. (laughs) And what I found makes all of this more difficult is to prevent burnout, they recommend exercising and eating a balanced diet. Okay, that's great. But for triathletes who are training like crazy, exercise sometimes can be part of the problem. And so this is where I really think like exercise. When I think about exercise to prevent burnout, this means backing things up, slowing things down, taking a walk in the woods, like only walking. It can be fast walking. It can be hiking. Personally, I spend a lot of time with my dogs because I feel like animals give off a certain energy that can really help us relax, whether it be a dog, a cat, horses, I think are some of the best therapy to help you relax. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't want to own one because that's probably not going to help you relax. But if you can go be near a horse, oh my gosh, just the best. But We have to change what we're doing. You can't do the same thing and expect to recover. Oh, Uh, I know. (laughs) So walking. Are you you sure? I'm just sitting over here being quiet. (laughs) I'm (laughs) Wow. I I really can't. I don't know if anybody just caught that, but Kevin is sitting over there being quiet. Yeah. Um, And I'm over here just spellbound. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to think about that though, about how to slow down still get exercise, still be healthy, but maybe take care of your mental wellness, okay? The other thing with the eating, you know, Kevin, if if Kevin goes and eats his Mexican, we know we have an issue. So, you know, maybe in the future, Kevin, after he experiences his Mexican retreat, um, (laughs) we'll just call it that. (laughs) <laughs> That's right. I'm picturing a beach for some reason. Exactly, but we're going to call that a Mexican retreat. So in the future, that's going to be Kevin's sign that, uh-oh, I, I need to regroup here. I'm sitting in a Mexican restaurant by myself listening to a crime novel. So that's when you need to get on board, go to the grocery store. You know, you're slowing things down. You're going to go eat some nutrient-dense food instead of the the feel-good food just to try to help yourself. Um, You know, also practicing good sleep and rest, not easy to do when you're stressed, but I think like taking an Epsom salt bath, doing something to calm yourself down. Gosh, all this stuff she's talking about too. We already do. No, no. Or we should be doing. Should be doing. But I mean, I'm thinking about all these things. Good. And I, no, 
mute. <laughs> Take back what you just said because I'm thinking about all these things. I'm like, seriously, go walk in the woods, go hang out with a horse. <laughs> Take an Epsom salt bath. And, and, and sounds I, pretty nice. Sounds I'm, relaxing. I, uh, doesn't sound relaxing to me. It's, uh, but here's my problem. What's your problem? Here's my problem is, okay, go take an Epsom salt bath. Mm-hmm. Go take a walk in the woods and think about all the things you need to be doing. Yes. Walking in the woods is when I sort my thoughts. No phone. No phone in the woods. No mm-hmm. podcast in the woods. I'm not, I'm not saying what you're saying is not valid. Right. But I'm, I'm saying, saying part it helps. of my problem, and I think part of a lot okay. of people's problem is. No, but okay, but I have started, and I am fifty, and I am. I want to continue to train and to be. I want to be high performance up into. Thirty years from now, okay. Awesome. I have started, and you've seen this. Yes. I've started doing yoga. And have started stretching. Because I never asked you to do yoga st- before. I, I know, but but I have started because because it is I, I do understand this this helps me take care of my body. It is not a relaxation thing for me. It is it is pragmatically, it is this will allow me to be able to perform like I want to perform. And it's something you don't want to do, so there is a bit of resistance there. So it is helping you grow it, it physically is. and mentally because it, yoga, meditation, causes you to slow your brain not, down. I'm not arguing that. What I'm asking is, how do you take people like me, which there's a lot of people like me out there, that, that there Jed's are. over shaking his head. Because I know where he's going. Yeah. Can't yes. turn it off. Yeah, how do you yeah, how do you get how do you discipline yourself to be able to turn those things off? See, this this is this is where discipline. People talk about discipline. This is discipline. Yeah, oh, I know. But you but, said the word. But people say discipline and, and there there are people I was like, "Oh, he's one he is one of the most disciplined people I know." Does this, does it blah blah blah. I am extremely undisciplined in truly taking care of myself. And when I say myself, I would say as much my mental health as anything yes. of, of an emotional health of, okay, you don't have to be everything for everybody. How, how do you discipline yourself? Just like, just like you tell people, Hey, don't hit snooze, get up, right? get out the, get out the door, go do that. I, that's not a problem for me. I, I, that, that's not a problem. No, I agree. But how do you discipline yourself to take that time which is just as important to slow down regroup unplug and just take a walk in the woods so here's the thing i do not think it's realistic for a kevin harrison to depart from life for a week and go on a retreat i do think that Kevin Harrison can take 20 minutes and sit in the bathtub in Epsom salts and calm down, focus on your breathing only, not on everything else. You have got to discipline yourself to quiet your mind because if we don't, we will never get relief. I am not asking you for days off. I'm not asking you not to go to the office. I'm asking you to go in the woods, be around the energy of trees for 30 minutes Sort yourself out and come back a different person. All right, I'm going to do that. That's, that's where it is. I'm, I'm going to try. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? You know what I think? You, you're talking about Epsom and I'm sitting there. I am, my mind is like working. salts. My mind is working and saying, okay, could I just turn that into a cold plunge? Sure. But that's not going to help. I, it I might know. help you with your breathing, but. That, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. when, it, when Jed said turning it off. Uh-huh. That is that piece, but 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 I do know if I don't, then I'm going to continue. And this is what I found too, as I age, mm-hmm. that it is it's a little bit harder to come back every time from when you hit that wall. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, Kevin, you are a hundred percent accurate with that, and that's why I think that in the one book that I read, um, it's called Peak Performance. Mm. I love this book because what it really talks about is taking the rest breaks that we take like when we do intervals for training you take like a short rest afterwards and basically the book talks about applying that to real life 
so that if you do something really hard for, say, an hour, Jed, you write for an hour, super focused, that you get up for 10 minutes and you just go for a walk around the parking lot. No phone, no anything. Just take a break, which we're not good at doing because you're working. You're being productive. Don't take a break. Take a break. We've got to give ourselves those micro breaks so that we don't end up completely burned out. Have you have you noticed? <clears throat> That's where you say yes because you're, yes. you're supposed to be yes. You're supposed I've to be noticed. monitoring these things. I've noticed. Jeb, we have these bike bike. When I t- when, whenever I tell you that I've got my bike on a trainer, there's like yeah. it's like this trainer thing. You it sends got feedback. no wheels. Yeah, it yeah. gives you the feedback. You're, you're measuring gives me the feedback. You're measuring your power, right? And so on these, you'll have intervals. Mm-hmm. I've gotten better at it. Taking it easy on the easy part? Yeah, where I struggle. Okay, on these intervals, you'll have one where it's like, your power is 250 for five minutes. And then you've got a three-minute where your power is supposed to be like 120. Mm -hmm. It's just recovery. You're just spinning. The way my mind would work, this one right here, the two, no problem. No problem. I mean, I'm going to hit that. Then we go to the rest set where you're supposed to just be resting. Well, I would lose like, okay, well, it says I'm supposed to be in like 120. But I'll go harder. Mm-hmm. But if I if I do 150, then my my average is going to be higher, and that's obviously going to help me because I, I'm doing more. I could not understand that any better. Yeah. I, I, okay, uh, look, what you, I'm looking for is I am looking for <laughs> peaks and valleys. Mm-hmm. Okay. If Kevin doesn't have his valleys where he's got his peaks, right. that workout was not a good workout. You were talking about riding for an hour, yes. laser focused. That's yes. not a problem. The problem is stopping because my professional standard has always been till it's done. Of course mm-hmm. it is. But so at the most, you have good focus in your brain for like 90 minutes to two hours at the most. After that, you got to get up and you got to do something else. You got to go for a walk, get a drink. Um, in their book, they actually recommend like, hey, if you're working at home, go fold laundry, go do some mindless task. So since I read the book, I've been really trying to do what they suggest, like take a little break, go do a mindless task. It has made a world of difference in how I work. Mm -hmm. Also, I know what stresses me out now, okay? I've really been paying attention to it. What causes bad stress? So I'm like, okay, I know this causes bad stress. How can I avoid putting myself in that position? And so when I come back and I try to avoid, like plan my day so as to avoid the bad stress and I insert these little breaks, I find that I work much better. Like it works. What they are talking about in the book works. But really all it is for those of you who haven't read the book, it's about taking those micro breaks, giving your mind a rest, giving your body a rest, getting up. And, you know, maybe if we did more of this, we'd have less of this conversation about being burned out because we're just so good at going and we're so bad at stopping. Uh, yeah, I mean, you think about think about your days. And a lot of my days, we've talked about early mornings, they start with get up. You've got, you have a period of time before the kids get up. And so hammer that time out, get your, get your workout in, make it happen, get back get the kids rolling, all the kids stuff's going, bam, get the kids there, and then straight you know, straight to work, start hammering out work, get as much productivity as you can, get done, done, and then evening comes, bang, bang, bang. Next thing you know, it's 10 o'clock at night, and you've been, since 4 o'clock in the morning, you have been going wide open. Mm-hmm. No, Every day? Every no day? stops. No stuff. Even lunch. You know what we call working lunches. Lunch. Yeah. Let's let's have a working lunch. Right. And not even being able to go and like have a lunch and just like shoot the breeze. How about having a walking lunch? No oh, walking. I know walking. A walking woods. lunch. We got trees out behind the building. Trees here. are we'll good. Put, trees have energy. I know that sounds crazy, find but us out here in the woods here in a little bit. That's, yeah. a, that's a different. That's a different <laughs> conversation. But okay, so we've established kind of what it looks like to be burned out about what it looks like, you know, the steps, kind of what to do to try to avoid it. But what do you do? Here's here's a heart situation. What do you do when you realize one of your friends is in this situation? Like, you know, oh, I, I know how to cure it. I know how to take care of it. No, no, that's that's not the way to help your friend. 
First, you know, just start out by listening. Be quiet and listen. I know it's a hard one, but sometimes people just need to talk it through. And I feel like sometimes when you talk to somebody, like I'm just saying a friend, just you're, you're talking to your best friend. It takes the power away from a problem. And I'm not saying just complaining and endlessly going on and on about your problems. That's not what this is. This is just, just listening. It all of a sudden the problem, like when it's coming out of your mouth, you're taking its power away. Yeah. Okay. So talk to your, talk to a friend. I, I don't mean post all over social media. I don't mean talk to every friend you have about how burned out you are. Nobody wants to hear all that. Just pick a person who really is your good close friend. Um, friends need to validate kind of what you're feeling, you know, and listen to them. Because people who are closest to you, I mean, they really care. They want to help you. Would you agree? Oh, definitely. But yes. but it's hard to know, like, who is that person in your life? You know, unfortunately, my, my running partner, she gets all of my garbage. But thank God she's an amazing person. And she gives me great feedback. And she she just listens. You know, it's 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 really... I feel very fortunate for that, but I know not everybody has that. Yeah, and you have to work to find those things, and that that's that's a piece of the or find those people, those people, and and, and those relationships, because it again that's another discipline because we're, we're it's so easy just to have. I mean, heck, you know, I I have the <laughs> every now and then I have to go in and. I get this notification. I was like, hey, you've reached your friend limit. Please delete some people out. And I had to go in and do it. Because they're all your really good but every friends, time, Yeah, Kevin. no, no. That's one of the, every time I think about it, I was like, man, these people don't know me. And, I mean, we're friends, right? And But how many true friends do you have? And I think as this, this is what I've. Handful? Yeah, handful. This is what I found. And this is bad. Uh-oh. I hate to even say this out loud. At. Every year that goes by, I seem to have less of those. And I've done that. But but less of those or because now you're older and wiser and you know what kind well, of... You pe- may be older and wiser. I have less because <laughs> I have not... Nurtured the relationship. I've not nurtured that and I have not made time for people. Mm, I think that was on our list up, I, now, up on top. Now, now, now listen, now I'm the one that will all call. Then if they need something, of and I, I'm the I I, I pride my I pride myself. No, no, hear me when I say this is not good. This is not a good thing. I'm saying I prided myself on being the person to call to fix something mm-hmm. and to help you out. But then I have when they when they follow that was hey man let's grab lunch sometime. I'd love to catch up with you. Ah, uh, you know hey man let me th- this week's really busy. Uh, let me let me get back with you next week. A couple weeks. Do you do it? Never happens. Yeah. It is a rare position, and I'm not in it as much as you are, but I, I used to be to a different degree at a different position. There is a rare rush in being the guy. Yeah. The guy that knows, the guy that can get it done, the guy that can make something happen, the guy that can tell everybody exactly what's going on. But That is that is some dopamine that you can't chase anywhere else. Okay, but I'm going to say something here, and I want you to listen. Mm-hmm. It is... If you're that person, that's great. I mean, yeah, it feels good to be needed. What did I just say? It feels good to be needed. So don't you think that those people who count on you want you to count on them? How do you think they'll feel when you call them up and you really need them? People want to be needed. If people feel irrelevant, that is not a good feeling, right? So your friends want to be needed. As just as you like to be needed. And so I'm just saying. 100%. And, and, and that, that is a flaw that I have that is something inside of me. Some, there's something that does not want to. Connect? Well, I don't what know if connect's the right word or if it is. Make okay, the time. You are, yeah, ma- making the time. When you think about, okay, man. Do I want to, what if, what if I go and have lunch with this person, we kind of reconnect, start talking, then, 
hey, well, let's get the families together for dinner one night. And happen. then let's do this. And it's like, okay, where are you going to fit all that in, Kevin? You, you know? You, you can't. And then you end up, then you end up. Overcommitted at night, again. <laughs> no. You end up on the weekends watching, you know, picking up, picking up food, bringing it back home. You're laying in the bed watching Netflix and being like, you know, man, I'm so glad we didn't go out with those people. And man, it would have been. There's I know a balance. It sounds There's, so no, bad, but, no. but that is, I think that's what a lot of people do. It's, but it's, but it's true. Okay. So you're probably, I'm just going to throw this out on the limb. I'm guessing you're a pretty big John Maxwell fan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I knew Jed that. Jed can tell you that. I, yep. Well, of course he is. Um, okay. So a friend of mine, she sent me this John Maxwell planner. Okay. Just came in the mail. And I was like, oh, I know who this came from. Knew exactly. Because she likes to have a paper planner. So I read, I listened to his podcast about how to use the planner, about how to look at your year, all sorts of things, because we had been talking about that here. Mm-hmm. So at the top of every page, not at the bottom, not in the middle, not in the back, at the top of every page for every day, John Maxwell suggests connecting with people. So you write at the top of the page who you're going to connect with that day. So every day... I have somebody I'm going to reach out to. How's that working out for you? Good. I reach out every day to somebody it? different. Yes, I am. What kind of, res- uh, how receptive are people and what's the reaction you're getting? They want to go have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's fine. Are you, oh, well. Am I going they to wanna, get coffee? They, they want yes. to go have coffee. Okay. Yes. Because, and, and on Fridays, I go to lunch with somebody different every week. That's my day to go to lunch with people on Friday. And, I am really, it is so important to connect with people for them and for me. And I feel like, I, I don't know why, like no reason. Like some, my husband asked me the other day, why are you going to lunch with that person? Uh, uh, cause, uh, I want to, no reason. I don't have to have a reason to go to lunch with somebody. It does not have to be a business dealing. It doesn't have to be somebody I'm going to coach. It's just because I like that person and I value that person. And putting value in people, it will always come back to you. And value comes with time. It does. And I'm, I'm the world. I, man, I value people. I, I, I know lo- you do. I would, I mean, I would do with the people that I'm con- connected with, however loosely it may be. I do almost anything wrong. I know you would. Except, except go to lunch. <laughs> except go to lunch. Except, and that is. That is bad, and I but 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 I do. The bad thing is I miss that. Okay, so I'm gonna send you a John Maxwell planner. No, um, uh, oh, she just said it, so it's right, coming. So I use a, I use a paper planner too. Me too. Okay, well, I'm going back to using a paper planner because that. it it actually she committed to it it is for I am. It actually makes me write down what I'm really doing. Um, it's too easy to move stuff around on an electronic yep. planner. And, and I want to, in order to really be able to evaluate what I do on a daily, monthly basis, as John suggests, it needs to be written down on paper what I really did versus me moving it around on my computer. I can't really look at it and evaluate. It anyway, is, that's a whole nother subject. When it's sitting there in ink, it's hard to ignore the fact that you didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Um, okay, so we got a little bit off topic there. I was saying that when you're feeling burned out, like, or you have a friend who's burned out, you know, how you can best help them. Um, It, it suggests like something I found on the internet. It it says, instead of saying, oh, it'll get better. Don't worry about it. Just tell them, hey, I see you. I see what you've been going through. You've been working really hard. I understand why you feel the way you do. Like give them validation versus a whole bunch of suggestions. Um, the other thing is a lot of times when people are burned out, the basics take a lot more effort than they should. The basics I'm talking about cleaning your house, cleaning your car. Everybody knows I like a clean car, cleaning the car, um, meals, like just drop a meal off to somebody. Or, you know, like if you see your friend is going through this, just drop a meal off, take their car, go get their car cleaned. Send your housekeeper over there. I mean, like, yeah, that costs something, but say, hey, can I come over and help you clean up? And I I mean, we are so bad about taking help from other people. 
I'm terrible about it. But those who are in my inner circle, I'll let them help me. I, I'm actually doing that now. Um, my mother is the world's worst at taking help from anybody or mm-hmm. asking for help from, from anybody. Um, my stepfather has some health challenges at mm-hmm. the moment, and, and mom's taking care of him. So I guess it was early December, or not early January, late December, early January. I said, hey, can I do something? Will you let me do something? She said, I, and I, I hit three or four suggestions. Can I come give you a break? Can I come take you somewhere? Do you need errands running? Can I bring food? Mm-hmm. And she said, you know, some food would be nice. Mm-hmm. So now I'm I'm planning what Bonnie and I are going to eat, and I send Mama menu on Friday or Saturday if she wants any of it, and she says what she wants. And we're two people, and you can't cook for two people. Right. You, you cook recipes are for four people. Right. I, I pack it up and take it to her. But see, that means a lot to her, yeah. and that helps her immensely. Well, and it means uh, means a lot to me too. It makes me feel like I'm doing something. Because you want to be needed. Right. We all want to be needed. Everybody does. So, you know, and as, as we kind of wind this up, I think my point is, is that if you see somebody who's struggling, just reach out to them. And even if they don't want to accept help, just try to do a few small, kind things for them. It, it's easier than you think it is. You don't have to go to lunch with everybody, Kevin, but you should. <laughs> No, I I mean, making time for people, it is hard, but it is always worthwhile. And I think as we all navigate where we are in life and the challenges that we face and everybody's working harder, everybody's doing more than ever, kids are involved in more things, we have to be compassionate to our friends, our family, and help where we can and at least offer that understanding. Um, and, you know, I hope that everybody who's listening today kind of can take something from this and go, oh, wow, you know, I'm, I'm going through this. I need to just take a little break, just a micro break, a mini break, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it, just to help you kind of f- feel a little bit better and a little less stressed. And it doesn't always involve more hardcore exercising. And that's coming from me. Yeah. You know, I, I always listen to our podcast when they come out and listen to how great Jed's made, made everything sound. <laughs> but this is one that I'm, I'm going to spend a little time with and fit because I think it's, it's probably for me, it's probably the most important one we've ever done for me. It, and, it, it resonates with me too. Obviously that's why I chose it. Um, but I think that after this one, the next podcast that we have coming um, is going to blow your doors off. Uh-oh. So, so, um, I mean, I, I think you're in for a real surprise on yeah. the next podcast that we're going to do today. So it, it will follow this one nicely. All right. And hey, hey, we're about to close this thing down. You, you know, the way we close it, you know, what's coming, but sometimes we, we, we put hard things into a box and we make hard things be like going out and running a marathon is a hard thing going out and being really successful at work, all these other things can be hard things that we talk about doing, discipline. But, you know, it's really hard. Sometimes we have to do the hard things that are very, very uncomfortable for us. And all these things we've talked about today are very uncomfortable for me. When I think about, like, literally, as somebody that Jed knows, just I mean, texting me while, while, we're do- while we're recording the podcast, and I have been putting him off, long-time friend, long-time friend, I've been putting him off weekly, for probably four months. And he knows me. And so he knows I, I, I've got to keep badgering him. And he was like, hey, man, what's your what's your schedule a lot this week? Kevin's going to lunch this week. And so I'm going to go to lunch this week. But but these things are very uncomfortable to me. So what I've got to do is I've got to take, take our own advice as we close the podcast. And I'm going to do the hard things today. And tomorrow's, tomorrow will take care of itself. <laughs>